afternoon, everybody. I ask for a sort of change in the way this presentation is going to go. Uh, so it's going to be 10 minutes first of my presentation uh, in terms of some of the work that we've been doing at the CSR, then open up for questions, hopefully for five minutes, and then go back to just one last part of just uh, some evangelizing I have to do, uh, which I think is important for, uh, for this kind of uh, meeting. Uh, so yeah, I'm Vukosi. Uh, I'm at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa. This is a kind of government lab, uh, which is a, also a mix between government lab and then also some, some consultancy or contract uh, research and development. Um, the work that I do is, is never one person. I think uh, that, uh, that is a theme um, at this meeting. Uh, that's the team, some of it um, that uh, I've been working with and leading for the last two years and we keep on growing, uh, you'll see uh, later on. Uh, we've been looking at kind of, uh, initially we grew out of uh, the Modeling and Digital Science Information Security Unit, so they were looking at using kind of data mining for information security. Uh, we've gone on, we've done, do work in fraud, anomaly detection, and spam. Uh, then we've gone into social media mining, behavioral modeling, and we now look at kind of the general data science approach to problems, uh, which means that we deal with kind of the full pipeline. So working uh, with private industry, with government, to get them to give us their challenges with their data, all the way to having something that can then be used um, by those organiz uh, organizations. So we've also kind of worked on open data things uh, through ODI2 uh, like, and open government partnership in South Africa and some other work with like national parks on tracking people and things. Um, so social media mining, so the beginning of this is that uh, kind of when I jo uh, joined the group, there was a lot of work trying to understand uh, crime patterns and in South Africa, we kind of have a political situation where getting data from law enforcement or from the police is kind of impossible, right? So they didn't want to actually give us the data to do analysis. People wanted to do modeling of that. And what you end up doing if you're in the space is getting Chicago data, right? But that doesn't make any sense uh, um, given um, the location. So <laughs> to do that, came up with this crazy idea of, hey, we want to do X, but let's not do that for now, and let's take this detour for two years. And the detour was, let's look at social media as a prop, like you know, a sensor that is not completely accurate, but in the metrop metropolitan areas, it might give us enough information as we need and allow us to do research in the things that we want to do, like, you know, a little bit down the road. Um, right, so why? Uh, there was availability of point data, uh, we can then build analytics that we need uh, for other applications and there might be this kind of um, spin-off that now we have to kind of deal with understanding language. So my background is not in like natural language processing, I come from reinforcement learning, um, mostly that part of machine learning, so I had to now kind of learn within um, the space. So the research avenues then meant doing things with language understanding, classification models uh, for incidents, whether it's public safety or crime, trust models, behavior modeling, and getting into privacy and ethics issues. Uh, so, sorry. so within the, um, this is just an example of a tweet, right? It says, smash and grab 30 minutes ago, corner Bree Street and Simmons Street in Johannesburg CBD. Uh, so from that information, you kind of have everything uh, that you need. You know what happened, uh, when it happened, right? Um, and when. Uh, within there, and if you deal with Twitter data, you'll know the JSON dump that comes out of there and you have the same thing if you like look at the Facebook uh, graph, you can also get kind of similar information. So for that, one of the things that's interesting in here that I just want to highlight is kind of context. So uh, in the language understanding side is you can have lots of different tweets uh, describing something that you think has to do with the shooting and if you just do keyword searches, uh, sometimes you might get into trouble. So for example, that one says, anyone know where I can find a shooting or gun range, right? And can get even worse, right? Uh, so somebody's shooting a video. Um, in, in Durban, so you have to be careful about this. So these are things that we knew we were going to have to deal with kind of when, uh, when we go in there. So we've been doing work around the space trying to, uh, to get this right. Uh, so for classification, at the beginning, we had this uh, thing of trying to if something was a crime or not uh, first before we go into public safety and then also the different types of crime. 
uh, I had to go through 1,200 instances of either Facebook or Twitter data and then hand label all of those just to create our initial data set that we wanted to, to use. 60% were not really crime related. Um, and that 26,000 was unlabeled at the time, but right now we have now millions of tweets that we've been, um, and Facebook posts we've been um, collecting from Facebook. We normally target uh, Facebook groups because yeah, you, you, like, you, know, you can't just use the Facebook graph to go into anybody's um, profiles, but if you have groups that are open, you can actually then mine whatever comments are coming in there. And South Africa, given the situation, has lots of people who congregate around trying to, uh, what is it, uh, help their no neighborhoods uh, kind of avoid crime. Uh, so there we looked at text, um, the social graph uh, features, and then words and social graph. Uh, we were able to do some initial work with like accuracies um, up to about um, 80%, uh, still kind of not enough uh, because of this was just crime and not crime within there. Um, the other one was then looking at kind of topics that are going on as people are discussing. So here, moving into more kind of un unsupervised work. So what we wanted to do is figure out if we took all these, um, these social media posts and then from there try to extract topics, could we actually find that there's things that we're looking for and this might actually then form uh, a new vector that goes into our classifier. Uh, so here, for example, the blue, um, the blue are kind of topics that are similar and they run over every week. So the thing that you'd expect is something like traffic. So traffic shows up a lot, uh, almost in every week. And the red are things that happen um, just like, one, like once in a while. So there was an unfortunate situation of like a mass shooting at a police station. So that's what, that's what actually came out of this, and you saw a lot of people kind of uh, talking about it and as such, what we want to do is be able to also pull that out um, as time kind of um, goes on. Um, the other question that comes, I'm, I'm just giving kind of this overview, is now who do you trust? Um, who, who's giving information uh, on these networks? And we're still working um, kind of on this to actually now also then try to kind of classify the source where the data comes from in order of being credible or not credible. Uh, before you actually then say something actually did happen um, uh, before. And so here what we're looking at is, um, just like the speaker before, looking at who's actually then uh, creating all this content and if we could actually split it. So one of the things that we're able to do is look at um, law enforcement and authoritative sources like newspapers versus kind of everybody. And once we did that, what you could find out is that you almost have like vigilante groups. You have people who are always talking about incidents. And from there, sometimes the content that they actually spread might not be truthful. Right, but then because all they're doing is when somebody says something, they think, okay, I should just retweet that and share it with other people. But it might not necessarily be true um, as opposed to that. So then that's where things like trying to figure out link data of uh, if it's something that's very big, most likely there might be a news article about it. Can you find that news article um, uh, from that space? Um, from here, what we're hoping to do is then move to a point, point where now, like here, we're extracting locations either from uh, the post geotags or we're reading the text and then extracting the locations as described and then figure out, out where this is and from like we, we can then do things like heat maps and one of the things we wanted to do was actually then look at behavior of some things of saying how, how do they move around can you figure out if it's once off thing or it actually might be a pattern um, on those things so with this kind of state of, um, okay, no, I'll, I'll talk about it in a bit actually. Um, the other thing is privacy and ethics in this space. So does tweeting or putting up a Facebook post that's public mean that you give consent for people to use your data for this? Uh, so <laughs> we've been also then kind of trying to write then papers in the space, discussing some of the challenges. We've subjected ourselves um, at the institute to actually apply for ethics clearance for, this, for, for some of this work, which meant some of our research was delayed by eight months because it hadn't been done before, but we knew that it was important because we wanted it to be something that people do uh, within their, uh, on making sure that we protect people's data, uh, there being one, and also what are the, our rights and responsibilities if we find something and what, how do we share that if we have to share it with somebody like law enforcement. Um, so we've been um, speaking about this um, and also I think uh, there's also kind of work that has to do with kind of power dynamics in, in, in data gathering within developing countries that also you, uh, come, um, comes to the fore. So the full system 
uh, kind of then looks something like that, uh, that we envisaged, and then we've been just building up the pieces, so you get the raw data. Um, for us, it's either Facebook uh, or Twitter. Uh, then you uh, do like, maybe cleaning and extraction. Um, then we do lots of location extraction. We did a brute force, and then we've been doing a bit of name density recognition now, but, and then we have this crowdsource engine, which I'll talk about soon. And then you classify, and then there's just going to be this trust thing. Uh, that's still kind of um, going on um, uh, for us and lots of different. So OpenStack is there, uh, as we have, we use that uh, for our own internal cloud. Um, the system looks something like that at the moment. There was kind of version two of the system where you can go in and then you see all the tweets that have been collected inside the systems, what's been classified, and then like some analytics that are on there. They're not accurate, so when we talk to law enforcement in South Africa, we always say that like it, it is, is not going to be accurate as per people going into a police station and reporting something. And also this is most likely going to be something that's public, right? So interpersonal crime, most likely not. You're not going to find it um, within uh, within this space. So. Uh, what are our current research thrusts? So one is Horde. Uh, Horde is a kind of cloud source engine that we've been working on. It's not like it's just for this specific use case. Um, and it's connected to some research work uh, that I'm overseeing on using active learning for better sampling. So what happens is that we have a, a website uh, you can go to. Some things are cut off, they're really not supposed to. Uh, I was just mentioning at the bottom there who the, who the student I'm working with on this. Um, we have uh, all these social media posts um, that are kind of in a bag, and what you have is that you know what you've seen before and what people have actually tagged for you, and now what you want to do is then do sample the next tweet to show to a person to label for you, uh, but you want to do that in a clever way instead of just randomly doing that because it's, it's quite a bit of work to get this data. So you want to make sure that at every time you're showing some piece of information to somebody, it's, it's actually as useful as possible. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of like machine learning and some statistical approaches that we're looking at, and he's working on it for this like the next four months or so. Um, the other one is things like label propagation. Um, so you want to use other data sources to get labels. Um, so here, uh, we'll, what you have is that the news articles that have to do with something that has to do with public safety or crime, and a lot of the newspapers have tags that they automatically, like they, somebody puts on their content creation platform um, on there. So for example, here, um, this comes from News24, you've got the news, the text there, which is, I mean, sorry, you'll have the title, uh, and then you'll have the text, and you have here in Bombella, Come a crime, which is the tag that they they, they they put on the tweet. So on the news story itself, what you want to do is that we know that there's actually missing tags, so they're hidden. Uh, um, so one thing is to go through all the news that you have, propagate the tags, uh, given how close each news story is, and if they have tags that they share, you might move them across. You can even weight it probabilistically if you want to, and then from there you want to connect a Twitter post then with a news article, and then you can then get a tag from there. Now the space that you need to get is what's the thing that labels something as being crime or not. It might be that if the, the, the tag crime is there, if the tag accident is there, motor vehicle accident, then you can use those actually um, as labels. And yeah, um, another one is doing real-time event detection. Uh, so here is just working now on the side. The, the social media posts are coming in in real time. How do you do event detection on top of doing the classification so you can um, build that in? It's actually, uh, again, previous speaker, very nice resource share. So I'll also look at that event detection uh, module from Leon. Um, yeah, so here we're looking at some streaming graph community detection where you create a graph from all of your content, but you want to do it in stream and then be able to tag events as they're coming on and also have some minimum threshold before you say something is actually an event. Uh, so this might be good then for ongoing situations where there might be like a car, car pileup. Uh, we've had a couple of those because of smoke on the roads or something like that. Um, yeah, okay. um, and yeah, so the good news is that after two years of this, uh, for by some reason, like some weird thing in the universe, we started getting access to real law enforcement data in South Africa. Um, so now we're working on now delivering some of these analytics uh, to law enforcement, even, even though I don't think they know we're doing this for them uh, at the moment in time. 
Um, and what we want to actually is get to a point where we can compare what we've been able to sense through social media to what's actually out there in some of the major um, the major cities, especially I think there's one on car accidents that we want to kind of look at, um, and that's happening with my colleague and one of our, uh, our data engineers on there. So going back now to that context issue, um, where one the way things are written also um, might not necessarily f like you know uh, uh, SMS text, I mean, or social media speak, and at the same time the context is quite different. Uh, we have uh, myself and um, PhD students are then working on looking at ways to do representation that can help us uh, get, get through um, some, um, some of these things uh, that can help us with context and also like you know what's actually similar without us having to go and do things like normalizers where you're extracting every, um, every abbreviation. Given South Africa we have 11 languages officially in the country so the way people write is, 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 is kind of uh, very diverse and as such at the moment we don't also have enough language models uh, for all, the, all, 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 all of the, the languages and we don't want to throw away the data. So what we might do is given that we have millions of these tweets now is then use that and then uh, come up with like a deep learning architecture to be able to now express uh, vectors um, that can help us kind of work um, within this space. So yeah. Um, that's going to be that first thing. It's, it's a lot of things that we're touching on. I didn't have like one to go into deep into. I just wanted to give an overall here. Yeah. Sure. We'll take up to three questions and then we're going to show you something afterwards. Yeah, thanks. Uh, great, great stuff. Just curious about the when you're extracting events from tweets, yeah. uh, do you have some sense of which things get over-reported and which things are under-reported? Um, I'm just um, wondering if, if you have police uh, data, you know, then you may be able to actually get a, 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 yeah. a measure of Twitter bias, which is an interesting thing. Okay. So, um, with, with that one, like, I, like there was something I wanted to show you that the, my data engineer just sent today. It's just I can't because there's a camera and things might be <laughs> like you know you, you don't know people might. Uh, but yeah, like car accidents. <laughs> uh, car accidents are, are something that's out there a lot, um, and South Africa also it's hijacked. You you kind of figure that out uh, very quickly. It's which is very odd because if you if you look at what in the, in, 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 in the in the police, when they get called in, yeah, it is accidents. And the second mode is actually not that, or accidents of traffic. Um, I think we've seen like things like people calling in and complaining about electricity, right? Which is not something that, yeah, at the moment we were looking for in the tweet. So, which might be something we also put in and general service delivery by government. Other questions? Can you say a bit more about the topic one? What the actual model? Oh, okay. Um, so the first one that we built up was just a kind of with LDA. Uh, you can probably then look at also dynamic LDA because you want to uh, not have to specify K. Um, and I've gotten over the last maybe six to eight months, I've started like an NMF more. Uh, for, for, for these type of things. It, it, um, we're working on something else uh, for rapid, um, rapid, rapid um, strategic document analysis, and we found the, the topics are, m are much more clearer uh, within the space. But even with here, with just LDA, you could actually see the main things. It's, it, the problem is the, 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 the kind of the clusters that are not big. It just becomes a wash. Um, and then you need more kind of more data to do that, but then it's Twitter, so you have small, like, you know, not that, not that much data, and that becomes kind of problem, problematic. So we're trying to kind of, um, like, maybe we're looking at tweet to vec as being, so our deep learning architecture is going to be an evolution of, of tweet to vec to do that, and we're hoping inside there we'll be able to, and, and then obviously doing a document instead of just words. So we'll ho hopefully we'll find things where we start clustering that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay. 
think that's it for questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, for that work, if you want to talk to me, I'm, I'm around today and tomorrow, please do. Like, there's a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> and yeah, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> um, okay, so the other things, there's two other things I wanted to talk about because I'm passionate about them. Uh, and this is like a great venue for this. So one is, how many of you know of Data Science for Social Good program? Okay, so Data Science for Social Good. Um, is a program that started out of the University of Chicago, I think, in, in 2013, uh, just to get kind of every summer in, in the, at that place to get uh, some students to work on kind of socially relevant problems uh, with mentors from University of Chicago and other places. Uh, so this inspired us at the CSR to start a similar program. Uh, in the in, in the University of Chicago, it used to be like majority PhD students. In South Africa, to get like 40 PhD students is really would be like you know would be nice, but we can't um, do that. So we started this program called DSide, um, right? So Data Science for Impact and Decision Enablement, which is kind of exactly uh, what the Data Science for Social Good program is just. Uh, taking into account kind of our local situation. So it's, it was funded by the Department of Science and Technology in South Africa, and it's to kind of uh, help in bu building capacity for the country of data scientists. But we want them to be socially relevant, meaning they're working on problems that are really trying to advance uh, um, the society. And, uh, and such, uh, we look at third year onwards students, uh, so in the first, it was mostly third and fourth year students, but now we've started getting more masters and PhD students, just kind of changing some of the culture, because most of the time with uh, postgraduate working through the year, so we have to now convince them to take three months off their, um, their studies, but we are getting more and more of these. Uh, the students participate in like this mentor-guided learning by doing things, so you get a challenge and you get data at the beginning of it. And the challenge might come from inside the CSR or from outside, uh, meaning government also gives us challenges, they give us data, and then we work on this for, uh, for three months, one month during the winter, and then two months uh, in, the summer uh, in the summer period. So it's multidisciplinary. We, we've been getting people from computer science, engineering, graphic design, math, public policy, and statistics. And you mix these kind of students in teams, and they work together. And there's a lot of tension, because getting a graphic designer to join a computer scientist is not easy. Uh, <laughs> and trying to, uh, to kind of look at that. And we've been kind of, um, uh, it's, it's been going very well. And uh, since it's been running since 2015, and now we've kind of like uh, cohort number four, uh, that's kind of this year. There is a website at the bottom also got cut off uh, in there, but yeah, um, if you go to my Twitter, you can probably find the link um, on there if you're, uh, if you're interested. Um, oh, that's, that's the website. Anyway, it's great. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, so we always looking for partners at the moment, given the funding where it comes from, we were taking only South Africans. But if people are interested in either getting us money so that we can accept uh, people from the rest of the continent, it would be great. If you want to give us problems to work on, also uh, would be great um, uh, to, uh, to do that. So you can contact me on there. And then also if you want to come for exhibition days, you can join the mailing list that's available on the website and we'll let you know when the exhibition days are. Because uh, when the students finish at the end of every period, they actually have a very big exhibition day just showing all the projects that they worked on. Uh, for that time. And a lot of things have come out this year. We're working on one on forecasting wind energy production for the whole of South Africa. Uh, if, like, you know, and optimizing where to put wind farms within the country. And this is being done by a mix of master students and undergrads. Um, just with me as being a supervisor of that, of, of kind of that work. So, and we're trying to push more that they start actually publishing by the time they um, they kind of finish, and also for the tools to be then be used um, outside. Okay, so that was uh, DSA. The last one is the deep learning in Dava, which is the other hat I came here uh, for. So we have Data Science Africa here, uh, which I think has similar goals: is to bring together the community. Um, we've had lots of chats about having very strong participation. African institutions at the large machine learning meets all over the world. And um, one of the things that came out of some of these conversations uh, last year was a kind of pact for a couple of researchers, both 
uh, here, like in, in South Africa, and some of the big uh, kind of uh, research labs internationally, to say we should start having these kind of machine learning master classes, right? So same thing as the summer school, uh, but bringing in and trying to be at the edge of um, of research, and then attracting people to come in, uh, identifying talent, nurturing it, and then get our first, like you know. Uh, African NIPS papers, because I've actually got access to a data set of all the NIPS, or NIPS is the, one of the big machine learning conferences. I got access to all their submissions that were successful and which countries people came from, when they, where they were affiliated, when they got accepted, meaning what university they were working for, institution, and we've never had a successful African submission. Right, so this was one of the things now. Uh, that came out of it was let's start doing this. So we're afraid, so the, an endava is a Zulu word for a gathering. So we're going to be having this every year. Um, this year uh, it will first be in Johannesburg, um, in South Africa. There's a lot of sponsors actually. This is not even uh, the most. I think we found people who are also passionate about this. Uh, it'll be six days um, of this program. Um, the organizers are mixed between, at the moment, there are some Google, DeepMind, Google, um, and a couple of universities in South Africa and the CSIR, but this is fluid. This is not about institution. Um, as per se, this is, we just needed to get this done for the first time. Uh, the speakers are going to be a mix. So we're going to have uh, people from South Africa and it's, um, academics. We have um, an email uh, from Amazon uh, Web Services. We have Danielle from Imp Imperial College, Bubaka, who's the chair of data science actually at Ames in South Africa. Uh, within there, uh, let's keep on uh, going. Uh, yeah, uh, Nando, um, again, from um, uh, DeepMind, uh, Constantina, uh, also is joining in. And yeah, it's, it's a kind of a one, it's diverse, and that's one of like, this is by, by design. Uh, and we're trying to attract people uh, to keep on um, supporting this. So people have asked me um, other than where the people applied from. We had 734 applications, and after the application round closed, we still probably got more than 100 emails with people asking us, please, I want to be in there. So that, in terms of the real potential, I think is over, over 1,000 people who wanted to come in. A lot of it, yeah, South Africa obviously had like uh, the biggest amount, but also across the continent we had a, um, a lot of demand. And as such, again, also, um, this year we, we got money that came from South African sources who wanted to sponsor students, and we could actually like, you know, support some of the students. I think we're supporting 70 with full scholarships, meaning they will fly them from wherever they are at the moment in South Africa. We do have a couple, I think Madagascar and Botswana, that we were able to, to get in. But in the future, if we get more funding and we also get, like, you know, some of our funding comes is Department of Science and Technology in South Africa, so it will have to be for South Africans. But if we get more funding, we can increase, uh, increase this. Uh, we don't know what 300 is going to mean. Uh, it is already breaking us in terms of organization, so we've had a lot of people who are helping out to get this kind of to go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you.